What's on your mind? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams because I knew they were there. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance, and I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden and help prepare him for the task that is yet before him. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. You know, I think you'll be all right, even without my help. What's on your mind? Cure me? What, am I sick now? Even you know that you cannot cure the dead. And I'm not the only one dying. You are too. <laughs> I'm just more efficient about it. Ah, child, your concern is heartwarming. But death comes to everyone, and it is not something to fear. People fear not death, but having life taken from them. Many waste the life given to them, occupying themselves with things that do not matter. When the end comes, they say they did not have time enough to spend with loved ones, to fulfill dreams, to go on adventures they only talked about. But why should you fear death? if you are happy with the life you have led. If you can look back on everything and say, yes, I am content, it is enough. I think I've led a good life, a full life, and I for one am not afraid of death, whatever it may bring. They say that when you die, your spirit travels through the Fade and returns to the Maker. And after that, We'll see, won't we? What's on your mind? I try not to dwell too much on the mistakes of my past, of which there are many. I would go quite mad if I did that. But I do have one regret. The greatest misstep of my life. Made even more grave because it had dire consequences for someone else. Years ago, I was assigned as mentor to a lad, an Aaron. He was my first apprentice. Anaren was an elf, raised in one of the elven alienages, and he was very mistrustful of humans, especially humans in authority. What Anaren needed was time. Time to get used to his new home, time to emerge from his shell, so we could build a rapport. I gave him no such time. I was young and arrogant. He is a mage, I thought. He needs to grow up and act like one. I expected too much from him, too quickly. I gave no consideration to his origin or his feelings, and he retreated further from me. 
all I could think of was how stubborn he was, how he was throwing away all his talent and his potential just to be difficult. Oh, I dread to think. I was a harsh taskmistress. He might have thought I was a demon in disguise. You cannot plant crops in the cold, wintry ground. You cannot teach a student who is closed off and unresponsive. Patience is what is needed, and I learned that too late to help him. Anaren ran away from the circle one night. I had berated him over some trivial, ridiculous matter that I no longer remember. I drove him away because of something utterly unimportant. He was a child, fourteen at the time of his leaving. They had his phylactery, and they hunted him down. They called him Maleficar, a mage who practices forbidden magic, deserving of death. He was a child, misunderstood and lost. I begged the Templars to tell me if he suffered, if they gave him a quick death. I got no answers from them. I was his mentor, and they wouldn't even tell me what became of him. I should have known better. I had the best mentors. They were kind, compassionate. Why didn't I learn from them? I failed in Aaron. All I had to do was listen to him. He would try to talk to me, and I would tell him to concentrate on his spells. He talked about the alienage sometimes, and the Dalish. He always talked about looking for the Dalish elves. The Templars are well trained and thorough. That he still lives, it would be a vain hope. The apprentices that came after Aneren benefited greatly from the lessons I learned from him. In a sense, he was my teacher, and I his student. And there it is. My story, my one greatest regret. I hear you had a hand in saving the Hala, Maserinas. I'm not sure what we would do without them. I... I appreciate you trying to find him, but what are the chances? Anaren the healer? You know Anaren? He... he lives? No, it can't be him. Perhaps it is a common elven name. No, I know of only one Anaren. Ah, it makes sense. Anaren said that he was from the human cities. You are old friends, then. If you seek an errand, you must venture into the forest. He prefers to be amidst the trees and the animals. Thank you all so much. I know a few tales. Our clan has passed this way many times before, even when the Shemlin lived in these parts. If you wish, I can tell you what I know. It is not a long story. Our legends say that before the Shemlin came, the Brazilian forest was a place of our ancestors that predated even our oldest homeland. The people of the Imperium came here and gave the forest its name. If they found traces of our ancestors, we cannot say. If they did, those elves were slain or enslaved. We know only that a great many battles were fought here. These trees grow upon the graves of those who fell, Shemlin and elves both. So much death in one place tore the veil into the beyond. The Shemlin know the beyond as the Fade, the place of dreams and spirits. When the veil is torn, spirits pass into our world freely. The legends say that one great spirit possessed the wolf that became Witherfang, who passed its curse of rage onto men and created werewolves. So Zathrian insists. He says that Witherfang does not age as the werewolves do. Witherfang is as much spirit as it is beast, and thus it is immortal. Perhaps it cannot even be slain. At the very least, it is old and powerful, much as Zathrian himself. The forest is said to be haunted. Spirits possess the trees, the wolves, even the bodies of the dead. 
They yearn for true life, you see. Who can say what value the Imperium placed on this land? And how many elves died here, in slavery? Even the barbarians who came to overthrow the Imperium fought and died on this soil. No one knows. When the Shemlin lived in these parts, the curse would spread anew to a few of them with each passing year. They would run off into the forest, never to be seen again. Eventually, all the Shemlin left. One assumes the werewolves survive by passing their curse to their offspring. They have had no new blood. Until now. It is said that one or two have turned already, though the Keeper denies it. As for the rest, they will either die or turn, unless they are killed out of mercy. I would rather die than become a ravening, soulless beast, wouldn't you? One last warning. The forest is like a thing alive. It changes as it wills, closing paths behind you and opening up new ones. Too many have become lost within, unable to find their way out. Were I you, I would endeavor not to make the forest my enemy. Friends, turn back, please. These woods are a danger to those who do not know the paths. A Niren? Wait, I... I remember your face. But younger, more impulsive, stern. Win? I thought they had killed you. They very nearly did. The Templars found me while I was searching for the Dalish. They ran me through and left me for dead. I brought this on you. Oh, I was a dreadful mentor, harsh and impatient. I, I am sorry for the way I treated you. I've put that behind me, and you should too. I didn't fit in with the Templars in your Chantry. My path lay elsewhere. Irving is a reasonable man. He will find some way for you to return. The Circle needs new blood. It needs to change. I have fond memories of Irving. He was always kind to me. I will consider your proposal, and perhaps I will speak with Irving. However, I promise nothing. Perhaps the mage you seek is right in front of you. The Grey Warden is a mage, no? The Blight will not last forever. Why not look to him to shape the new Circle? It is something both of you should think about. No, we've spent enough time on my personal affairs. It is time for us to move on. Look at this. It's the hardened sap of a tree native to this forest. It's been something of a lucky charm for me, and now I want you to have it. Very well. I'm grateful. May your gods smile on you and Aaron. And on you. Just leave me alone, Warden. Seriously. Upset. Ugh. I don't get upset. I get drunk. Did you want to talk about something? What about? You get a sword or an axe, and are told to go out and defend your city. It's the best thing in the world. That is until you try to live in the city you saved. I mean... They train you to kill, teach you to harness your rage at the first noise you hear, then try to set a hundred sodding rules about it. Like those provings. <laughs> Ancestors show their favor through the strongest arm, right? So why so many rules saying how to fight, and when you win, and not to bloody kill? Killing's what swords are for! You toss a nug to a deep stalker, you don't expect it not to eat the thing, right? <laughs> this makes me cranky. Don't you have any other inane questions? All right. Aye, all right then. Hey, Warden, you gotta hear this one. This human walks into a tavern, and there's an elf there, and she says... <laughs> <laughs> As she says, <laughs> she says, I don't. <laughs>
You there. I, you. <laughs> I've been watching you. Where can I get some sauce for that rump roast? <laughs> Ooh, that's just what I had in mind. <laughs> Go and make yourself ready, woman. I'll be right there to see to it. <laughs> I was just thinking about what happened to the elves, and I... I'm reminded of a song sung to me many years ago. It was when my mother died. And this wise elven woman comforted me and told me that we shouldn't fear death or hate it. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving. Thank you so much. Yes, you led me to an errand. You persisted, even though I was sure all you were going to find was a dead end. I will never be able to repay you for what you've done for me. Finding an errand allowed me to bring that chapter of my life to a close. I feel free. A great weight has been lifted off my heart. This moment, it feels like the moment before the sunrise, when all the world is still, holding its breath, waiting for first light. I can stop thinking about my past and look forward to the future. Thank you, my friend. You will always have my gratitude. Have you given any thought to what Anarin said? There is wisdom in his words. You are a mage, and you could be what the Circle needs most. Your life as a Grey Warden has given you a chance to venture abroad, farther than many mages have been. You've seen the world, dealt with kings and lords, Templars and apostates. You've seen the good and bad of all of these. You could bring these experiences back to the Circle, improve it with what you know. It will take time, but it can be done, slowly. Oh, believe me, I would if I could. But I am not long for this world. Day by day, I feel myself weakening. I will not live to see the Circle rebuilt. 
and made stronger and more glorious. This will be a dream I take to my grave. It doesn't have to be a dream for you. <laughs>